Learning Objective 3 is stock-based compensation, and this was a very important technique used by growth companies in order to build and retain key managers and employees in a company. The main objective is to align the interests of those working in the company, like employees and managers, with the ownership of the company, and that's the main objective of these types of plans. One example is we're creating an incentive for employees to think and act if they were the shareholders. And that's what we mean by aligning interests. It's not toward their self-interest. They're trying to do the best for the company. Second is there's a time dimension to this because often there is a vesting period where you'll get this amount of shares, but you have to wait five years. Therefore, you have to stick around for five years. There is definitely a retention aspect that is part of the rationale for these stock options. What types of plans are out there? There are a few types. There is a restricted stock. And these are issued to the employee, but they can't sell it until they're vested. In other words, after a stated period of time, then you can have the full ownership benefits of the stock. In the meantime, you're just marking your time and staying with the company and vesting your restricted stock. The second are RSUs, or restricted stock units. And these are where they have the right to receive the units after a certain vesting period. So we don't issue the shares until the date is passed as opposed to restricted stock where it's issued but it's not yet fully exercisable. Next are stock option plans. This is where employers are given the right but not obligation to buy the company stock at a specified price called the exercise or strike price. And this is what I was alluding to about Silicon Valley. If you join a company and you receive options at the then market price of say $50 a share and in the five years that you're there the stock goes from $50 to $200, that $150 per share is your profit in your stock option position. It could mean a lot of money. And certainly for many companies, millionaires were made from rank and file employees from the existence of these stock option plans. Next are stock appreciation rights. And these aren't actually shares, but they're kind of phantom. And it is if the stock goes up, we will compute the value that goes up and pay you for it. We have some of the benefits of helping the stock increase in value, but it's not legally issued shares. And the other is employee share repurchase plans. So this is just a plan that companies give to employees so our employees can take their own money and buy the stock in a company. And there typically would be a small discount to, again, give a deal for employees to invest in their own company. So most of these have forfeiture provisions, too, because, again, the intention is retention of people. If you were given these rights and you exercise the options tomorrow, then there is no retention benefit. They have vesting periods, which typically is between three and five years across these different types of employee stock option plans and other stock-based compensation plans. When we analyze them, it's a little tricky because we look at the expenses and they show up as expenses when it's a non-cash expense. And it's also potential dilution. If you're a shareholder, every one of these additional incentives to employees could make your percentage ownership go down. There's a dilutive effect for all of these options and various stock compensation plans. From the expense side, this was a long battle that was finalized where stock now is charged to the income statement. The, the mechanics are an award is made to employee for, let's say, a stock option plan. There is a measurement of what is the value of that stock option. There's a model that typically is used called the Black-Scholes model, but it basically estimates the value of options given to an employee. Then we take that dollar amount of the value conveyed and divide it by the number of years that the employee would have to work in order to vest fully those particular options. And that amount constitutes the amount of expense that is charged every year for that employee to be with the company. Because as their stocks vest, they get the value of the option. And as they get that value, it's expensed by the company in the income statement. So that's what happens for expensing. Now, the issuance is more like we mentioned, a right but not obligation. To the employee so if they exercise it there's no PL effect because we would have already taken the expense during the time period of the vesting but when we report this it's a big deal because some companies have large amounts of stock options that have been awarded to their employees we will look in the income statement and we may or may not see the details in the published income statement but it would be in the notes if it's not on the face of the statements and it's buried in two places one and it's based on where do people work 
One is if they work in the manufacturing or R&D, then the stock-based compensation is charged to where they worked in R&D expense or inside the cost of goods sold. If it's to employees that are in selling or administrative, it would be included in selling and administrative costs because, again, that's the department they work. Similar to salaries, where their salary is charged is where we would charge the allocation of the cost of these employee stock purchase plans. And as far as the expenses and the cash flows, it's not a cash expense because there's no out-of-pocket cash from the company to the employee. So there's no cash outflow. We can see that since net income goes down because of the expense, in the operating section of the statement of cash flows, you'll see an adjustment upward to cash flow, showing the increase in the expenses. And there is that potential dilution mentioned because if they were to exercise them, the number of shares outstanding would go up. And as far as notes, we will see the notes that show the details of the plan. It would say how many shares have been granted to all the employees, how many shares have been issued under those plans, and also if there were forfeitures to show the amount of people that have left and essentially left money on the table, or at least shares on the table, when they left the company. And as far as the expensing and the calculation of the accounting charges, it will show the valuation method. If it's Black-Scholes, it, it mentioned that. If it's some other method, it must tell you how they went about estimating the value of the options conveyed to their employees and how they expense those over the period of time of service by the employees.